Okay, so let's start by saying each of us has a factory floor, but that's not the most, and you can rotate it, right? Each of us probably can do that in independently right now is my guess. But let's, before we do any of this like factory floor shit, let's go through the, what's going on up here. Let's see what the market board is and I'll explain what that means first, right? So one thing to note is currently this is the random order. And so the engineering order is Ozzy, um, Brian, myself. Thanks for the teach. I'll, thank me later, Brian. <laughs> this is, this is going to be way rougher than my Pax Premier or uh, Nevsky teach, right? Because I didn't really play this myself yet. I played like two rounds of it, but I'll try. And again, I think we can fumble our way through it. So there's an engineering order. And then the sales order for a different phase of the game is the opposite direction, right? We can still modify this order. Again, it's splatter there, but there's a whole phase just for player order. And the other thing up here is punch clocks. So we have 24 punch clocks and various events in the game, like researching certain uh, stations, uh, trigger, playing certain cards, will tick down that punch clock. If the punch clock ever reaches zero, the game ends in that round, or we end after seven rounds. And the way we measure the rounds is after each round, we will expand our factory floor with a little expansion tile that we glom onto the side. We'll see when we get there. And you'll, you'll see how many expansions you have and that will tell you which round we're in, right? When you put up, when you put down the sixth, the sixth, ah, the sixth tile, then you know you're going into round seven and that's the last round if the punch clock hasn't run out. So there's two ways that the game can end. Neither of them are, hey, unparalleled, neither of them are like the win condition, right? They're afterward you count, basically the way you win this game is money. So if you look up here, it says Ozymandias, zero dollars. That's basically your victory points. And then it says G3, that means you have three Gantt charts. Uh, why? Well, because you're first in turn order um, from the engineering side, from not from the sales side. Usually you want to go first in sales, not always. They're both good and they're good for different reasons and they're both smart, especially the engineering one. But we'll get to that when we talk about it. So now I'm going to overwhelm you with something by clicking on this button up here called View Market Board. There you go. This is basically what's happening on the table when you're not looking at your factory, right? They are literally called Gantt charts. They are. This is triggering. <laughs> we can call them something else. Um, so you can't unclick that by hitting market board again. You have to basically click on a player to go to their factory floor, right? Oh, interesting. It actually just stored what I did here, right? I don't know what enter sandbox mode means. I have no idea. Um, so let's go over this market board really quick because there's a lot going on here, right? So on the left, we have the market demand. This big grid, this matrix, don't forget to open Jira before you start your turn. Don't, oh God, don't say that. <laughs> um, and what you can see here is we have four quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, and four, and that will matter later on for when we increase demand. Um, but for now, what matters is that it has these four bands, right? It has this, they're diagonals. It has this band down here, has this band, this band, and this band, right? And those bands are different cost categories. And right now there's only demand in the lower left and there's $6. So anytime you make a sale down here, you get six bucks. Um, there's demand for cars. You can see right here, right? Each of these little squares here is called a niche, right? So what they basically resemble is the demand for a, so let's look just at this car here right now, right? This is a demand for a car that has one advancement on design. So it has at least one design feature and zero safety features. Likewise, these two cars here, they don't care. Zero, they don't, that car, you can sell them any piece of crap, right? For this one, they have to have one safety feature and zero design features, right? Now, one thing that I'll tell you strategically, I think is important to note about this game is you can build anything. These stations don't cost money, but if you load up your factory with like this fully featured car on turn one, 
you're not you, you basically locked yourself into that car because you can't change it and if then the specs and the desires change you're entirely inflexible right so just because you can build everything doesn't mean that you would and i think that's where the game is hard because it's very enticing to be like this is all for free it's a candy shop let's put this all and glom it onto the car and then you have the homer mobile right and then next round people are like i need range and you're like well i can't actually do that uh uh right so I think that's where that's going, right? I th and I have barely played the game, right? So, okay, so what else is happening here? Right now, these two axes are design and safety. And you can already see that over here on the right, there are three other things, reliability, range, and speed, right? Um, so each of us has a token, right? So right now, Ozzy is, I don't know exactly what these are, right? These are these actually map to real cars. I think the red is Ferrari and there's Mercedes, but Mercedes is not in here right now. Um, I think I'm the red, uh, um, Brian's purple, right? But you, if you look up the player boards, you'll see who they are thematically. Um, so in the beginning, we all start with nothing, right? Like, yes, we start with like one research on safety, which means we're not on the zero space, right? We're on the one space. Do you have time? <clears throat> let me let me just text. Let me just text these people. This is very un. Like if I actually archive this on YouTube later as a teach, it'll be like, what is this guy doing? Um. One second. I'll. This is great. Be free at eleven thirty a.m. my time. Uh, okay, so that means we have an hour and fifteen minutes. So we'll get through the teach and maybe we'll start the game. So these start randomly, right? So we get safety and design random, and these three are over here. You'll see that the ones that we have here, they're already on there. They start at this one spot. There's two, three, four, five, six for each, right? And they start on the one spot of design as well, which means we have access to that technology. So we have access to a break, and we have access to paint, right? Uh, as of now, because uh, each of us are on that. We don't have access to any of these parts because they're not researched. Um, and that little white bar is the minimum spec. So at the end of a round, the minimum spec will go up. When that, so, so this arrow here on the bottom left means that at the end of turn one, design will become obsolete. It will move over to the right. And then one of these, based on how far they are along on these tracks, will get chosen as the next X axis, right? So these X and Y axes on the demand will change over the rounds. So yeah, and, and then there's like, this basically means right now, if you want to build a car, you would only be able to add a brake or paint. That's it, right? But you wouldn't have to add any of these for to sell this car or this car, right? Um, I'm very glad that we're playing this digitally all of a sudden. It's, it's, it's fiddly. Like a lot of splatter games are very fiddly in their physical versions. Um, Actually, if True Chain Magnet isn't, but like, good luck playing Roads and Boats without tweezers, right? This one supposedly also, if you watch the Shut Up and Sit Down video of this, um, Tom basically says this game is super fiddly, right? And he, in his video, he's like, you can accidentally bump the table and everything goes out of whack, right? Um, but, you know, whatever. As, as said earlier, Food Chain Magnet didn't seem too bad, but moving the individual track seems like a nightmare. It's, it may be, um, Branislav Barrett's makes it look easy in his video. And he's probably just, maybe, maybe he doesn't drink coffee. I don't, I don't know. He seems like a chill dude. So anyway, um, that's that. You also have an assembly capacity, which starts at one, which means you can produce one car per turn, right? Maybe I'm extra scared because my galaxy class klutz says Ozzy. I mean, I am too, so... That's another reason to spend thousands of dollars on a game table where the game is in the recess, like it's lowered, so you don't accidentally bump into it all the time. Um, and the minimum spec up here is a thing that happens when one of these gets retired. So at that point, I think, and this is the part where the game will do automation for us, and then later on we'll go to the history and try to understand it. Um, and, uh, and then the minimum spec of any one of these can be bumped up, which means that later, if you're trying to sell cars, 
if there's like a minimum spec here, like if it has like one in design, that means that no matter what you sell, you need to have at least one design feature, right? Um, something like that. Maybe it's not one, maybe it's like level one design feature. I'm not sure on that right now, but we'll figure it out. Um, so that's what you're seeing on this board, right? All the different things that people want, how far are they researched by any, any one of us, and how many cars are gonna be sold maximally in the next round. I think that's all you need to know for now. So now I'm gonna to go to my board and I usually, I don't know why, obviously the first orientation is absolutely irrelevant, right? It's rotationally symmetric for those of you who are super nerds like me. Um, I somehow like having the door down here. So this here is your loading bay, this, this, uh, this hatched area. And this here, this light stripe is your doorway. So you can never block that with another factory tile that you stick onto it, right? And the other ones have doorways too, so it's a little bit annoying. So I'm gonna set confirm now. And now you guys don't, you can do this in parallel, but I'd say wait till I did it, till I did it, wait till I've done it. So we each get one planning and one research department. Um, what are these? The research department allows you to move along on these tracks, right? So that's what these tokens are. When you spend research on a turn, you get to advance one token. On the assembly capacity, you can only advance your own. On the other tracks, you can advance anyone's. And you're like, wait, what? Why would I help other people? Later on, you'll have more research. You can only move any one of your tokens one step in a turn. You can't move it farther than that, but you can move other people's tokens. Now, if you want access to their technology, all you have to do to get that in that turn is to be farther in priority on the engineering track. Because there's a thing in this game called engineering focus. And what that means is, if you are first on the engineering track, then when you're building your, your factory on the factory build phase, you have access to every technology that's been researched by at least one person. So you can always memorize this by the position you are on the research on the engineering focus track, right? So if you're first, any token that has reached any part on any of these five bars, you can build that, right? And again, it doesn't cost money. You can just take it and build it, right? You can only ever have one of a technology attached to a car car mainline, right? So we haven't even, don't worry, the hardest part is still coming. I'm st this is still the easy part of the game. Um, but that's such a cool feature, right? So you can move other people's uh, tokens up a track because you're like, ah, oh, I really wanna be able to put a bumper on the car in this next round, but my token's not gonna make it there. Oh, Ozzy's is gonna make it there. And I'm gonna bid for first position on the engineering track because I have the most Gantt charts. So the Gantt charts are how you do bids for turn order, which is going to be the next step and we'll get to in a second. Um, so it's like, again, ownership in splatter games, whether it's like research or, or IP or whatever the hell is always a very nebulous concept. And it's amazing. I love it so much. It's, there's such an argument there's such a beautiful argument wrapped up in this, right? Obviously, they're social democrats. Obviously, right? And live in capitalism and kind of like marvel at it, but are also not the biggest fans of it. It's fantastic. I don't, I've never, I'm 100% for sure that's what they're doing. Um, uh, because I'm not entirely dissimilar from that. And neither are any of you, I think, or most of you, but whatever. Um, so... Yeah, and you don't have, and you can ignore everything I just said because it has nothing to do with the game, right? But I think that's what the argument is here. Um, okay, so the research department allows you to re to bump up research. So, and you can have, you know, we start with fifteen of them. You only get one at the beginning, right? So now I clicked on this, and now this turns into a grid with a little overlay, right? Which is way better <laughs> than the implementation of food chain magnet, right? So I'm just gonna put my research here, and now I'm gonna put the planning department here. Is this a good place? I forget. I forget if this here is maybe better. Maybe I'll put them here. Maybe I'll put them here. So they here. So I can't put them there or here, right? So they have, and they get a red outline. So they have to be adjacent to the door. So I could do this and this, which 
don't do that. This is terrible. <laughs> so I'm going to do here and here so I have some space up here to build the car, right? And then I say end turn. So now I now I lock these are forever going to be there. Forever, right? So now you you now Ozzy and Brian you have to do that too, right? And I I hate to tell you I can't give you good advice on it other than probably pack them somewhere where they're not directly in the way of everything else. And again, it's symmetrical, right? Whether you put them here and here or here and here does not matter, right? You'll have the same space. You'll just have to think about it rotated. And you can rotate and flip every tile. Weird callback for probably no one else but me, but this reminds me of the base building in old school XCOM games, which was grid-based. It's not entirely dissimilar. Right. So in any case, you guys need to. So before we can move on now, you both need to do that. Why I don't you know what? This is this is idiotic. Why are we not on a call? Why are we not on a call here? Do do a little bit of new object. Where do I? I feel like I had you two on a call at some point. Oh, no, it was more than just the two of you. OK, so I would like to. Boo, 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 boo. How do I, oh, here, new object, add someone, Ozzy, there we go, create DM, three members. Okay, so if you want to be on the call, if, Brian, if you don't want to be on the call, that's fine too. Um, but I'll start a voice call just so that we uh, could converse. Da, 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 da. Are you there? Dave. Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm just trying to make sure that the audio levels are right, but I think they are. Can you say something, Steve? Yeah. Uh, oh, hey. Okay, great. You're both here. Fantastic. There's, there's Brian, and then here's me. Levels okay? Yep, I think so. We'll see. Yeah, I think they're I think they're fine. Um, okay, so let's see. Okay, you locked it in. You both locked it in, I think. Yeah, okay. I locked in placement. Okay, current. Okay, so now, okay, good. So now... Ozzy, now we're in now we're in the research phase. Okay. So in the research, wait, you know what? This is the part where I'm going to go here, right? So research. What happens here? So you perform research, right? But there's not that much that happens yet, right? The player with the highest engineering focus goes first. Perform research. For each research, ah, for each research department, uh, they must move one research marker forward by one step. This can be their own part marker on the assembly capacity track or any other research mark marker. If the marker reaches a field with a punch clock, move the time card down, blah, 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 right? So you can move anything up. I don't think I would move the assembly capacity up yet. Although, although, right, if you somehow manage to get first in sales, because in the next phase, so after research, we get to set focus. And in the set focus phase, you use your Gantt charts to decide whether you want to spend all of them to pick your position in turn order. And now you have three Gantt charts. So you, if you spend them all, you will be able to pick your position first, right? But they always go to zero. So it's not like you spend one Gantt chart. You spend all of them, and then you get plus as many um, planning stations as you have, planning departments. So that's why all of our things up here right now say three, two, or one, and then in parentheses, plus one. Because each of us has one planning department. That's how you per round, get more Gantt charts to determine where you want to show up in turn order. Why am I telling you all this? Because you could probably move yourself to the third spot, which would put you first in sales. And then if you had two assembly capacity, you could actually probably sell two cars. Do I think that's a good strategy? I have no clue. <laughs> but it's, yeah, a thing, it's, a, it's a thing you could do, or you bump... You can bump yourself up on any of the five research tracks, not just the two that are currently the axes, also any of the others. Right. So I'm looking at some of these and the the like the engine has also range one and reliability five. Um, what does what does that mean? Does that mean I, I'm going to guess that doesn't mean advancing those tracks like engine advancing has, reliability. Sorry, five. what do you mean? What, what are you looking at? So if you hover over, if you mouse over um under speed, speed the first the first one there under oh, the b okay. part of the very so, so here's my four also range one reliability five yeah so what that means is 
that the engine doesn't only exist on the speed axis, right? It's also on the range axis here. Oh, I see it. Okay. And on the now reliability, I... it's up here. Um, okay. and, and you'll notice later on that you can get, you can have different cars have different versions of that with different arrows on the main line. And it, that's where it gets just not, it, again, I, 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 hate, I hate to say that we haven't gotten to the hard part yet. <laughs> we, this is uh, this is all still the i would say buckle up and and it would be appropriate because we're playing a horseless character this is the scaffold this is the scaffolding <laughs> and we're, we're, we're eventually you already said charts and put both brian and i like in a in a momentary coma from from our work stuff on so, that so i don't know that i so if i were you right now i would try the strategy that i just suggested i would actually potentially put myself up on assembly capacity and get ahead of other, the others to get a quick 12 bucks. Because here's the thing, as the demand increases, these other um, gradients will be filled with cars. And the highest of those four is the one that's worth $6. And the rest are lower. So only now will these, will the customers like pay a lot of money for trash? Because this stuff down here is essentially garbage. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, yeah, it's, we have, it's we have a six dollar car, so yeah, it's yeah, there's a <laughs> you get what you pay for, exactly. and, and yeah, there are like two, there are two of those automobiles in the in the zero by zero kind of grid, like I guess mini quadrant, right? And so, the other thing I'll tell you, which I again, we haven't gotten to construction yet, laying down a market of a two by one so that you can corner the market is trivially easy because your main line doesn't even or your 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 uh. Your show house, show house, Jesus, my English, the store doesn't even need to have a marketing department attached to it to just lay down a two by one grid cell when we get to the selling phase, which of course, right now I'm telling you this and you're like, what the hell is he talking about? You're saying words. Um, <laughs> they, are, they are in sequence. I like John Not... saying this is this isn't Mario Kart. This isn't Mario Kart yet. Now, when we get later in Horseless Carriage, we will get to the Mario Kart phase. Where we build where do the we Mario get the Kart mushroom phase. upgrades? Uh, so uh, something I missed, Andy, was like uh, uh, the zero th through three on the board. Do those correspond to levels of these axes, or what's the zero through three again? So the zero through three means just do you have zero, one, two, or three components? of design oh right? okay gotcha now later on as these uh minimum specs start going up these axes will move first from zero one two three to one two three four and then they'll mm. move to two three four five right so mm. right now again we are in the early game where people are like whoa this i feel like brian you incur in playing nevsky with you you've encouraged me to narrate everything now <laughs> so Thank stop you. me if it gets too much but it's just like this is like holy crap look at this thing there's no horses on it we don't get we don't care yeah. we don't need brakes we don't need anything okay take my money <laughs> you got an engine and paint that's all you exactly. need exactly so uh yeah i don't know if there's a monty python for um car manufacturing but maybe tommy boy you know i don't know maybe um, i don't know um, um, so in any I case, did go ahead and move forward. Um, right. I did move the assembly capacity forward, so it's it's moved on to Brian. Got it. So now Brian has your same thing, right? You have one research point. Um, yeah. You'll probably so not get either... to, you'll probably not get to sell first. So I think for I, I don't I don't think that either of us should care about assembly capacity, right? I think we should just care about mm -hmm. what kind of the market are you trying to corner. And I think in this early stage of the game, it's kind of hard to say because again, right now. Mm -hmm. Getting to two on design or safety is not necessary for the current demand, right? Mm. So you could, you could say, okay, I'm going to try to seed for reliability, range, or speed in the future, knowing that mm. design is going to go away at the end of this round. And again, mm -hmm. when we look for what replaces it, it will look for which of these has the most innovation, which is always mm. the, t the sum total of all tokens on that track that have gone up. And then that will become mm -hmm. the next demand, right? Mm -hmm. Now, okay. at the beginning or the at, either at the end of this turn or the beginning of the next turn, each of us will get these cards that we can then place on any of the four quadrants. And those will seed new demand for cars. 
right? So, mm. and that's when the cars will start getting better and the demands will get higher, but we have some control over that. Yeah. Some of those will of course okay. also be race cards and trucks, which were, which will basically be dead, right? Cause we're not building those. Um, and so if I, if I put my research point into my, um, my player name up there, that's going to give me an, a Gantt chart. Is that right? If you put a, re wait, sorry, if you put where? So, so it's letting me click on my own name up, up top. So I can click on any of the tracks or the assembly capacity or my player name. I don't think that that should do anything for the research, right? Because the only thing the research allows you to do is to, uh, right? Yeah, Either. Just, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So it's I just think showing me my it's player. It's just showing your player board, board, right? That's just, that's just the UI doing its UI thing, right? I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'll just go up reliability because I don't like the duplication of the engine on range and speed for some reason. I think that's so, totally fine. And I'm, I might follow you down that path. I'm just like looking at this right now. I'm like, okay. Because if I do that, then for sure reliability will be the next demand, right? Yeah. So I could, I could even move you up, but I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm going to move me up. Okay. Mm. Okay. So. I do like the idea of, of getting a chassis for reliability as like a second order thing, like you <laughs> oh, know no. the, the actual thing that the whole yeah. carriage. Like, I mean, runs on. you can you can definitely go into the into the rules sheet right all the way in the beginning, and the way they set it up is is pretty much exactly that, right? Like somewhere in here, it's like this year, blah blah blah. Of course, active safety features include. I don't know if we need them, right? It's all very tongue in cheek. Um, yeah, and man, the art on this game is definitely. I think it's their. I mean, again, I think food chain magnet is sure. great, but the art is is really good. Okay, so now we're on set focus. So what is set focus? It's bid for turn order, right? So Ozzy, because you are first here, have the most Gantt charts. Um, you get to pick that first, and so here's how this works. It's your turn. You have one decision. Am I going to spend all of my Gantt charts to pick my position in turn order? Or am I going to pass? If you pass, you will retain relative order minus, of course, uh, ne Brian goes next. And if you don't pick it, Brian could say, oh, in that case, I'll spend my two Gantt charts to put myself first in sales or something right. like that, right? right. So, it opens the door for him to leapfrog me. Now, basically. keep in mind, there's an important aspect of this. So remember what I said about engineering focus, right? Right now not that it matters right but like right now literally uh brian and i could build batteries right we could build right. batteries in fact whoever's second in turn order can also build batteries because second means any research that has been researched by at least two people right so batteries have been researched by two people which means you don't have to be in first position to build batteries is that important right now probably not but I'm just telling you, this is the trade-off between being first in engineering and first in sales, right? First in engineering gives you access, right? And to be clear, if you say you built batteries and then you lose access to it later because your token isn't there, right? you keep the battery. You don't lose the battery. I guess right. just in following up to your assembly capacity strategy. I would, like if I were if, you, I'd spend all Gantt charts because three is not a lot, right? Because you always right. have to spend all. Say you collected like 12. I think the Gantt chart track on the board goes up to 20, right? And now yeah. suddenly there's a turn in the future where like, I really want to be in this position this turn. You're going to spend all 15 Gantt charts. So I think spending okay. three to have a little bit of a leg up in the first round doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt, right? So if I were you, I would say spend, and then I would put myself in third position, right? Which is first yeah. for sales. It is interesting that it has buttons for one and two, but I mean, I have to spend all three. To, you have to, to spend to all, that. you always have to spend, you, you're, you have a binary decision. Spend it all okay. and put yourself in position or don't, right? And so okay. now if Brian passes, you'll be first in engineering order. Okay. And last in sales. But, but Brian, I don't think it matters because as long as your car has one design feature or one safety feature, you, and I think what's going to happen is Ozzy is going to get $12 and you and I are each going to get $6 because, because also you and I only have one assembly capacity, yeah. right? So I don't think that this yeah. matters right now for you is my, is just my strategic, my advice as, uh, as your attorney, I would say, you know <laughs> You do not have to do anything right now. Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, I 
super don't understand what's going on, but it doesn't seem like there's any motivation to go first in sales since I can only produce one car. It doesn't exactly. there's any motivation yeah. to go first in eng because I, I guess I already, you and I already have there, something so, special so eng wise. Uh, everything is everything you just said is 100 percent correct. So spending your two Gantt charts right now would be just a waste, right? right? So I think you just pass, in which case I also say pass. Okay, and now comes the meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, what so now we get in what? now we get into the meat of the game so here's what the just happened so so, the screen so changed, now you so. can click on the other players charts up here but you don't you don't see what so when you click on yours now you see this other stuff right okay so let me explain to you what's going on here from the ui perspective it's showing us all five research tracks up here right they're very tiny and if you look right. closely you can see what you have access to by looking at these little or actually this shows i don't even know what this shows right now honestly like there's a little like oh yeah you can build that you can build paint and you can build batteries no that's exactly it right i have brakes batteries and paint and probably ozzy i can't see this on your end but probably you don't have access to batteries right probably batteries will not pop up in your c lines Right. No, I don't have. I have paint in my sea lines, but no batteries. No batteries, exactly, because you haven't researched it yet, and you're I'm not. And and if and you're number three, so it would have to be researched by at least by all of us, and it is not. So that's why you don't have access to it. But it doesn't matter. So what are we seeing here? We see all the tracks. We see the market demand encoded in like. There's a market demand for zero zero. Mm -hmm. Right. There are two of those. There's one that's a one zero, which is one on the. I forget the names now, right? But one on that track, one. and then there's a zero one, right? So it's just trying to encode the market demand in a smaller footprint that you could, of course, look at the marketing. You can look at the board for, right? So all that's happening here is they're trying to encode that in a smaller footprint. So now this is the this is what's going on. We have three main lines, and we're going to ignore the sports main line and the truck main line for the for this because it gets unnecessarily mm -hmm. complicated. So we're we basically only have a car main line. The main line is where all the parts glom onto for that car to be able to be manufactured and then for it to be sold, that main line has to be attached to a dealership of which you have three and these dealerships have potentially marketing departments. You can also build more planning and research departments. I could go like this. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -dum I could literally end my turn I don't know if you guys are looking at what I'm doing here right now. I could literally end my turn like this, which would for That's... sure, for sure lose me the game. <laughs> but you would be so knowledgeable. Be You'd amazing. be so well researched. Yeah, it'd be amazing, right? I couldn't even, with, with six research, I couldn't even bump up all my tokens, right? Because I can only bump up, I could, I'd bump up all your tokens. Kingmaker. <laughs> to build no card. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to reset that because that's garbage. So none of these cost money, right? But what you have to do is you basically, in order for this to not be a total garbage, is you have to build a main line. And you know, it's red now because it, you have to be adjacent to something, basically. Uh, it's gonna stay red until it's adjacent to a dealership, at which pace now they're both green, right? I can't build this out here in the wild. It has to be adjacent to something, right? So now it's green because it needs to be adjacent to a dealership. Why, you'll see in a minute, but I'm gonna delete that for now. Okay, so what's my strategy here? I think that we, so basically right now, all I would need to do to sell a car is this, done. I would have to attach absolutely nothing to it because this, right now, nothing is calling for that to happen, right? Now, what did I do wrong already? <laughs> I already, if I kept this right now, I would have already blocked off my ability to attach any A-line feature to this, right? What are these mm -hmm. A, B, C, Ds? They just correspond to the hatching, right? So that not of the depart, not of these departments, but the A-lines, B-lines, C-lines, and D-lines, and you can look up here on the research tracks, you'll see which of these parts are A-line, B-line, C line and D line, right? So oh, those are the letters on the cards. Okay. So I could, so I can't hover over this right now, but I can tell you these are doors. So this car would never have a door. <laughs> so, so do you, so you see how you can like massively screw yourself, right? 
and the and the heavy cardboard playthrough of this is where they said it's after this phase where you feel bad because <laughs> you look at your factory and you're like i think i messed up okay so i really wish there was a galaxy trucker like part of this game where after you build your car you have to send it on a race and just watch watch Larry and Sue. everything fall apart oh, yeah. right i mean we we kind of do but it's 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 much more subtle than asteroids hitting your ship <laughs> so what am i going to do here i don't know so i don't know that going wild is a, is a good strategy i don't know that that's true um so i Sorry, so quick, I, quick question you said that if you just plop down a car in a dealership you could sell this turn i but could well i could if ozzy, I, if ozzy sold the two zero zero cars then you would or would not be able to i would not so does, and Ozzy will he sell, sell he will sell the two zero zero cars, right? So you like fully sell. It's not like sell one, then no, the next person goes. He, he will sell two because this the minimal marketing depart. So if we if we have no marketing so here's another thing I can do, right? I can take a dealership and do this, and then I attach a marketing department to dealership. And now my dealership window that I use to corner the market will be two by two. If I have none of these attached to it, it's two by one. And if I have two attached, like so, now it's three by three, right? So you just have a larger segment of the market that you can corner because you've done marketing. Now, if you look back on the market board, this here is a two by one, right? So Ozzy doesn't even have to do marketing to corner this part of the market and do both of these sales. Now. Oh God, I forgot something. This is actually, so, okay, so I messed, here's, okay, here's the first part where I messed up. Yes, Ozzy will get to do the following on sales. He'll put down his marketing here and then he'll be like, cool, I'm gonna buy this one. But then it's my turn. And now I also get the two by one and now I could lay it here, right? And then I would buy this, I would sell, make this sale. And now if Ozzy didn't have at least one in design, he couldn't do this sale and he couldn't do that sale anyway because his marketing window would only be here. So we do take turns. It's not like Ozzy lays down his marketing window here and then does both sales, right? It's just that Ozzy will get a second round because he has two assembly capacity, which Brian and I will not, right? Okay. So, right. so, so, it, so in the same way that we're resolving, we're basically resolving like engineering placement now in a way, and then we will come back around and do sales. Yeah, I just, I, I feel like I did a, I misrepresented to you what your, what your cornering of the market is going to look like, because it's actually factually so that you won't be able to do that. So what I will do, what I'm going to do right now is knowing that Ozzy's probably going to plop it down here, which he might not. Ozzy might build one design feature and plop down his marketing window here, right? I don't think I, um, if I, if we talked about it, I missed it, sorry, but I don't think I totally understand how these marketing zones are going to resolve. Yeah, I mean, I, um, yeah, yeah. I, I know you, yeah, and it's like, because I'm telling you in the, in the off, let's see if I can look at the rules and see if there's a good visual representation of this. To move things along, so I, I placed a car main line and a dealership. And then I'm going to finish building, right? Like at this point, that's all that we really That's all need. we do. But here, look at this window here right now. So sure here's like an example where purple has one marketing department, green has mm -hmm. two marketing departments, and yellow has zero marketing departments. Yeah. Okay. So one of them will plop down their window first. And I think what happened here is that green plopped down their window first. And then they get to make a sale inside of that entire window, but only one, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then yellow comes in and is like, well, I'm going to plop down my marketing department here. And then I'm also going to make a sale in the same place. I right? see. So they can overlap. They can overlap. Yes. So there's no, there's no kind of, um, uh, like who is the best, you know, it, not, it's not a, it's, it's not, yeah, a, it's, so it's not a, it is later when we get to the higher spec stuff. But right now, like this, this quadrant down here has like, again, can be a car with nothing. Right. Yeah with no features it's just a it's just a thing with wheels i guess or not even i don't know maybe not even wheels i think yeah. that comes later they're in just the... looking at the car body and being like i want that in the future right so it you know, I, you know what i think it's not it'll okay. all make sense when yeah. we get to that phase and and if and again this is our learning game right if, if i if i misrepresented something and you feel like i totally messed it up then we can just restart but 
for I the think most. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's sort of where that's going. So right now, I think we can do we can do this in parallel. But I'll show I'll show you because I'm you know I'm the one on the stream. I'm gonna put down my car first just so that it's there because I have to show you a couple of things here that I haven't told you yet. So the first thing is, say I want to add brakes, right? So this has to be in some way, shape, or form connected to B. Uh, another thing I'll tell you is you can flip this card, right? So you can click on it and hit flip, and then B right. goes over here, and I think likewise you can yeah, you can flip it in both directions, right? Right. So. So now it's still showing red, right? Now it would even show red if I had connected it properly. It's still showing red. Why is it showing red? Because I always need to take one of these spec items, right? So you'll see that here it says a little one, which means it's a one on this track up here. So now I have to say, oh, the one I mean, because this brake shows up on other tracks, right? The one I mean is actually the spec for safety. So I have to point that at the item it doesn't matter whoops it doesn't matter where right so if i put it here yeah. that's fine why is this not why is this not okay so it has to be connected to the item but not the car maybe i don't know what i'm doing wrong i don't know why oh i'm like why it's not working because there's no dealership attached you always have to have a dealership attached oh another thing you'll notice so the set so right now it's showing red and now i'm like this is what i mean for the spec and now a, a, a little yellow cube appeared in the dealership. That means that the cars that the dealership will be selling have that specification. Mm -hmm. And that's how items through the main line make it into the dealership. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Now this arrow could be anywhere. It could even be like this. So I can use the arrow to connect to that part like so. So I could take this, put it here, take the arrow rotate it and place it here that is also legal right right as long as there is, as long as there's a connection there as long right? as there's and, a connection part of what yeah part of what i did for my main lane placement is i tried to i basically placed it so that all four sides would be open um but i did it with like only one of the three sides of, of one thing touching the, right. the factory or the dealership, right? right? So I was already trying to play a little bit of Resident Evil 4, like inventory management with this. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, <laughs> it's what it is, right? Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to actually try, again, I'm all, similar to you. I'm going to try to keep some space open here. Um, and I'm going to attach this. Not suitable. Oh, I have to put, to put this here first. I'm going to attach this like so. Does that make sense? Put this here. Oh, so battery, we're already battery and paint are already in contention. There are. Well, right. There's only. Yeah, I didn't have access to that, but you do because of right. the research. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attach this here too. Uh, again, I don't know if I'm really doing this well. But I'm going to try, I'm going to click something together really fast. Not suitable attaching point. Sure. Sorry. I do it like this. And now I have to figure out where I want to put market, where I want to put the dealership. Maybe I want to put it up here, but then that will give me very little access to be. But that's maybe fine. No, you know what? That's not fine. This is going to move down by one. And then I'm going to click this here. Ugh, that's also not great. Well, actually, no. Here and eh, this is never in a million years going to work. Um, whatever. I'm, I'm overthinking this. Wait, why did that not? Oh, it's the wrong side. Oh, I'm kneeling. <laughs> so bad at this game. Already, already messing up left and right. I'm just trying to get something legal at this point. Here. Okay, this is why is okay, why is this not legal? It's shocking that that's not legal, right? Um how did I do it? Yeah, I actually can't do I actually can't do what I was planning on doing. I think I have to do it like this. This factory is making me feel a little claustrophobic. I feel like I just how did I just do that? I'm really messing this up right now, am I not? Um because I do want to put brakes on here. But I didn't want to already block up all of B, but I think I think that's just sort of what's going to happen. I think I'm going to block up all of B, and I'm going to hate myself for it later. Um, but it's still not working. Okay, I did, did I do it like this? Maybe I did this. Oh no! Okay, pick that. There we go. You know what? I don't care. Let's just. Let's just do something like this. I would like to keep a, a little bit open 
would like to keep D a little bit open, but I'm going to put this here. Why am I doing this right now? I'm doing it because I want uh, I want to have one in design and one in whatever. I think this is safety, right? Is that what it is? Safety. I want to have one in both so I actually can still do that sale. So I'm going to lock this in and then hate myself later. Uh, I'm going to um, say, oh, sorry, sorry. Say finish building. Front sale. That's in still. And then at the end, so if, if, if anyone's looking at my screen right now, at the end, yeah. you still have to place what? your additional board, right? So this is how you expand the factory because you can have more than one main line. Now, there's a big important rule here. If you ever have more than one main line attached to any given dealership, they will take the lower spec. So if I had another car over here, say, that had only like one safety feature and not the design feature, and it was also attached to the same dealership, all cars of that dealership will only have one feature and not two. So that probably means that having two main lines attached to the same dealership is a bad idea. Um, so I don't really know what I'm doing here as per, as per usual. I can't do this, right? I can't, because the loading bay, that little white stripe can't be blocked, right? So I could do... Oh do something like this I guess yeah let's expand the floor up to the north just in case I want to put more on the D side I bet this is gonna be terrible okay we're done I'm done I've just I've just finished my my factory construction and now I just have to wait for you guys your factory has been saved or we verified again once you are the first player I don't know what that means um, because yeah this is happening I think this is happening concurrently until we get to a point where um, tiles are running out, and then I think we have to do it in turn order, which then, of course, would be the engineering turn order. That's interesting. That's kind of like the um, <clears throat> roads and boats. There's not really a turn order unless you need there to be a turn or, turn order. Exactly. Although the last time I played roads and boats was 2016. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I think it was 2018. But it's long enough ago that I really don't remember all the details other than that it was amazing. Um, that said, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, there's a test recording of our podcast. Like Nick and I did like a demo basically for ourselves in early 2018 before we started the podcast for real in late 2018. And it was me talking about roads and boats for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I still wow. have I still have it somewhere. I'm pretty sure I have it somewhere. <laughs> it's like maybe we'll put it out for the fifth for our fifth anniversary or something. I should really I listen apologize. to it. Somewhere I, I meant to undo the factory placement and it or the the expansion placement and it ended up doing like the whole thing. Oh, so God. I'm having to reclick. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I can I can go over a couple of let's see. I can go over just for people who are still watching, right? So where are we in this in this rules thing? Uh, we are currently in the um, build factory phase, right? Order of play is advised to do most of this phase concurrently to reduce waiting times. However, there's a conflict. The player with the highest engineering focus goes first. There you go. Placing stations, mm -hmm. definition of adjacent, general requirements, uh, requirements for technology stations, et cetera, et cetera. This, this explains everything about engineering focus. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, right. And so again, rules are: you have to be connected to the to the loading bay in some way. Um, each of these parts, these these uh, stations, has to be connected either via the spec token or via themselves to the main line that is of the same hatching. Each main line. Here we go. They did it. Each main line has to be attached to uh, one dealership. Right, and that's pretty much it, right? And then adjacency means at least one edge and not a vertex. Um, okay, so let's look what everyone did. Um, okay, Brian's stuff already looks way better than anyone else's. <laughs> it's like super hyper optimized. Uh, yep. Ozzy's looks like a snake, and mine looks like an, and mine looks like an octopus. So Ozzy's <laughs> Ozzy's looks the worst. Mine looks the second worst, and Brian's obviously looks amazing. Well, I hope we're going by aesthetics here. Yeah, we're definitely going by aesthetics. We'll see, you'll see in a moment how little how, how little or how much that matters. So Brian's yeah. car now has a spec in each, right? It has one in safety, one in reliability, and one in design. And that's smart 
and I didn't think about it because reliability is probably coming in next, right? Right. Uh, whereas mine has one of each and Ozzy's only has one in safety. But that won't matter because in, so what's gonna happen next is this thing that's fully automated. It always says an admin phase, right? Print sales brochures. Oh. And all that is, is something that you already see right now, which is these tokens here on our, those are the sales brochures, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all, all it's saying is like, take all your spec markers, look at the connections from the main line through to the, to the uh, dealerships and then put cubes on there accordingly, right? Mm -hmm. and that immediately puts us into sales, right? And in sales, which currently we're, so we're, we're in phase sell, right? Because everything obviously that it's, that's administrative, uh, and it says here, this is an admin phase, uh, means obviously that the website is going to do it for us. Right. So if you look at the history, that's probably where you would see what happened. Right. Um, the, no, it did start Papa do do spends all Gantt. Nope. <laughs> they don't even fin find it important enough to put it in the log. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so it's not even in the log, in the log of this game. Um, okay, so but now Ozzy gets to sell. So now Ozzy, what you probably are allowed to do is because you see this see this little icon here under your car. That's right. your two by one window. I That's also have a two by one window, and Brian has a two by two window because Brian has a marketing department attached right. to the dealership. Right. Um, so which is uh, pointless for me, but I'm just kind of going with a maximalist approach for the it, first run here. And it's it may very well not be pointless for you in the future, right? So, but that's a thing I can't properly assess because I've only yeah. ever played one or two demo rounds. So, Ozzy, what you would what you do now is you first have to lay out your marketing, your like your where do you want to sell to? What's your niche? Right. Um and in any case, what you're probably going to do is either place it here or place it here. Well, this would actually not be good for you, right? Because you can't actually sell to this car I can't because you one. don't yeah. have, you don't not. So yeah, your only good option is this, right? Yeah. Um, and then of course I, I'm gonna immediately be a mean asshole and steal that one away from, and steal that other Sorry, one. Sorry, which, 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 which car could Ozzy not sell into? This one. I can't sell into the one he because can't. I don't have the- He doesn't have the, the spec. The Right. I don't have the oh, it's one on purple. It's one on gotcha. purple, right? It's yeah. one. So he doesn't have. So his car. His car has brakes, but looks like shit. <laughs> it's not, yeah, I forgot the paint. He forgot um, the. Pa he forgot the paint. <laughs> hey, you know we just left the back of the factory. No big deal. Um, I mean, we can again. We we'll look at look at the snake of whatever the hell this is, <laughs> and be like, what? <laughs> yeah. And then we can again marvel at the packing skills, at the set packing skills of a computer scientist. Um, here we go. <laughs> this is more of a personality <laughs> defect than an academic background. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I've so done my sale. Okay, so you've done your sale, and now it's my turn, right? So now right. it says current player Neil. And so again, I have to uh, choose a dealership, place a market window. What's the inter what, what's the interface? Oh, my dealership, right? So I pick my dealership. It's already showing me in the UI here where can I even place this, right? Right. Um, so I'm gonna rotate it and then place it here, right? So that I can steal away that car. Yeah. Right. Now I could have also been nice and bought this one, but um I'm, okay. I'm not that nice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we get to like a good old the good old splatter games right where it's like yes. immediately like turn one round one it's immediately mean <laughs> so i gave and you if Ozzie, go ahead if Ozzie, if Ozzie had actually, actually purchased the lower one first not the higher one then my two by two could have actually covered two cars that i okay which you could which again i can't i also can't make that sale because i don't have the assembly capacity right but but mm, Ozzy won't mm. make it either. <laughs> right. This, it oh, I didn't have this right. I'm the second sale that, that I could have made. Right. Yes. So I'm going to end my turn. And now it's, uh, so now, yeah, now it's Brian's turn. You have to click on your, uh, your dealership basically. And then it'll allow you to put out the, the, the two it, by two. So there's, these aren't better persistent. In retrospect these are not persistent. Me. So those dealership. So like, just anywhere that covers that car is good. Anywhere that covers that car is good or either of those cars. Um, and then you, all of these dealership windows will go away at the end of sales. Right? Wait a they, second. So, 
So there's no way for you to there's no way for you to buy both cars. No, I get that, but and there's also no motivation for me to cover the car that you've covered because you can't produce it anyway. Pretty much. You the only reason for you to do that is to be like, well, Andy's going for design, and I'm going to get that one first because he doesn't have the spec and safety, which is not the case, right? Like I do have I do have this one in safety. Are these cars persistent? So the ones that go unpurchased hang so, out on the board? Not these, but later on as we add more cars, we're going to add spark markers instead of cars, and those will spawn a new car every turn. Mm, right? Okay. Up to a max of three per space, I think, which is also, which, you know, three, they love the number three. Like, number three is also in uh, food chain, right? The max demand for, for any given house. Or how do I confirm this? I have the thing laid down, but... Uh, you have to click on the car you're going to buy. Oh, okay. Right, and then once you buy it, it should go into your... Yeah, there we go. So you bought the bottom one. So each of us now has $6. And now a lot of shit just happened, right? So now I think that hopefully now the history uh, of this will have some explanation for this. Okay. But ba doo ba doo Ozymandias passes, no more sales possible, no stock, no stock, right? So this means Ozzy could have... <laughs> sold <laughs> but couldn't because <laughs> you had the stock each of us got six dollars okay obsolescence marker points up uh so the obsolescence marker that's this thing here now went from the right axis to the to the to the from the x to the y axis so we know in the next round safety is going away right is it always um, pop back and forth or it always something pop, to turn i in? think i okay. think there's as far as i can tell there's no way to move it back and forth it just does it does it automatically Right. right. Um, okay, so that's the first thing that happened. New tech track introduced reliability, right? right? Unsurprisingly, right. because it had the highest innovation. Um, but but it, reliability two furthest from the min marker one. Oh yeah, two. That means two tokens were mm -hmm. the farthest from the minimum spec marker, which is this white bar. Right. right and that's how it won and now it says design has a new minimum value of one so it looked at design when it came in and the highest marker there was at one so it moved the bar to one and now if you look up here at minimum spec any car you want to sell anywhere now not only needs to fulfill reliability and safety it wow. also needs to have at least one design feature this token can go up to two it can't go higher than two but now for the rest of the game this minimum spec is in is in is in in action in action, right? Um, that makes sense. I was wondering kind of what that meant because like was it people just focus on two things? That's it ever? Or no. Now so it makes sense. you'll yeah. see after phase five, which was sell, we get to six phase six finish, which just checks for game end, and then we get to phase seven, which is advanced expectations, right? Which is just everything that just happened. Scrap the old dimension, grow. Okay, now we get to grow demand. So that happened. And now we're in phase grow phase demand, um, which I think probably goes in turn order, right? So now you, Brian, have probably drawn a card that shows you a prop like a like an area that is one quadrant, right? Like it's either quadrant one, two, three, or four, and it's showing you placement of different cars. Those are going to be the spark markers, right? That spawn new cars every turn. Mm. So they kind of cult. So from from the complexities of marketing in in food chain, they kind of co collapse that a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's like yeah. in, it's like infinite marketing in food chain, right? Yeah. Because that I think those I don't think those go away. Um, now you have to basically pick which of the quadrants do you want that card to go in. I think. Yeah. This is where it my knowledge like gets a little bit fuzzier and where my teach is going to fall apart. No, that looks right. That's what it's. That's what it's telling me. And it's also offering me trucks and sports cars, but I'm not going to choose those. I'm going to yeah. choose the car. It's like higher quadrant. Yeah. Oh so, wait. Yeah. So, so we're not going to choose a card. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was like, yeah, it's asking me to choose a card and then select the quadrant you wish to add it to. Exactly. So you choose the card and the quadrant. And again, we're not going to be building sports cars and trucks. So if you pick cards with those in it, you're basically saying you don't want more demand to occur, right? I see. So, because I think even in the main yeah. game, they don't say take these cards out, right? They just add to mm -hmm. the demand on the board that you can't fulfill because you're not going to play with those. And the heavy card. So were, go ahead. Sorry. So if I were to put a spark down, that would be in the the two of the vertical vertical axis right now. That would mean you need two safety features. Yes. 
to sell that car. So yeah. that would be borderline unpurchasable. Well, you, I mean, you already have, yes, this, well, keep in mind, you have one. I guess you Yours already has one safety feature, right? Um, and it's not, I mean, you've left space for more potential safety features. I don't know if the, because again, these, these areas, A, B, C, D, don't necessarily correspond to those five mm -hmm. research tracks, right? Yeah. Right. They okay. probably correspond, I think that they correspond to some semblance of these are approximately related, but I don't even yeah. know if that's the case, right? Because if you look at it, it's like steering wheels are related to engines and to fuel tanks and to gears. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go with this then. Uh, okay, interesting, there. nothing okay. appeared. Me, well, did, did it, should we see it yet? Maybe, I... No, so this is, I think this happened simultaneously. So nothing appeared yet. I, we know from the from the history oh. that your card is in the upper left quadrant, right? Okay. We know that you put oh, your card see. down there, but we don't, oh, and yeah. it says it right here too. So we, but we don't know okay. what it is yet, right? So now, of course, because you're seeing my screen, you can all check out what I'm doing, but I'm probably gonna put the, man, none of us have reliability yet. Oof. Um, Right. Ah, okay. So look at it. So I don't care that you're seeing this right now. If you look on my screen and you look at these four cards, you'll see that the fourth card has a little punch clock and that will actually tick down this punch clock of 24 up here to 23. If, if that's the one I pick, um, and you know what? I'll pick it. I'll pick it. And I, if I put it here, it will be a garbage car. Um, and I'm going to do that. I want one garbage car. Um, okay. So now you can see, so now it's Ozzy's turn and, uh, Current player Neon, sorry, I have to end turn. Um, now it's Ozzy's turn, and Ozzy gets to do the same thing. Um, and you get to put down, you know, pick. You pick four. You have four picks. You can put it anywhere. You can pick a card, put it in a quadrant, and that will put the spark marker down. This is actually. I was way warm when 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 I was like, I'm going to teach this game today. I was like, ooh, this is not going to go well. Um, but actually, right now, I feel pretty confident about the teach. Yeah, no, mechanically, it's all making sense. Strategically, of course, it's a total black hole. It's going to be a total, yeah, who yeah. Knows. it's a big question. But it's like... I, and it's I, I can already tell this will be my favorite splatter game, probably. Wow, that's, that's, wow, that's like the highest possible praise from, from you. Because <laughs> you love... Well, I just mean that, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, like, like I said, my board game group used to play splatters almost exclusively minus 18xx, and they right. were all just right. zillion times better than me. But I, can, I love the logistics of this, this the... Um, the kind of design aspect that there's some creativity involved in a little way yeah. um, that condenses. I mean, it feels like it has a lot of the splatters kind of like condensed together and refined a little bit. And I, but I do love the factory space of this. I love that kind yeah. of like uniqueness yeah. you can bring to that. Yeah. The, the possibilities are just, it's, it's just wild, right? Like I think one of my favorite aspects of splatter games is there's very little randomness, right? Yeah. Like the only randomness I can see right now is in the four cards we draw, right? You draw four cards. You have to pick one. It's like it's yeah. also it's also like clearly leaning on the input randomness side, right? Like that's just their feature. Because I think yeah. if I if I'm not mistaken, like base base food chain has no randomness. Like none. the only randomness is like the first player basically, and then there's nothing. And then there's right. nothing, right? Which is basically as random as chess, <laughs> so, sort yeah. of, right? It's like a coin flip. <laughs> yeah. Who gets red? Who gets white or black and goes first? Um, which I, I think, think is uh, what people. I think are... great. So... Go ahead. I think Great Zimbabwe also has none, and I'm trying to think about bus if there's anything. Well, I have Great Zimbabwe arriving on Sunday, and I think that's going to be my maybe introduce it to the family complexity of a splatter game because I think that game mm. looks way easier than any of the other splatter games. I haven't played it yet because I don't have it. Yeah, so it looks a lot easier. Yeah. So I apologize for for breaking in on this. So I missed part of the explanation to Brian on the placement of this because my daughter brought me lunch. That's okay. Um, for so i have the cards up here at the top yeah um i select one and then i can put it in a quadrant yes and when means... i put it in the go ahead well i was gonna say now when i put it in the quadrant nothing seems to change uh you still I mean, have no. to confirm nothing you won't see it yet because it's going to be some, like all of us have to do this in in turn order okay. but then we don't re the card won't be revealed until we all lock it in Okay, so, right, so, you, so do I end turn? Yeah, you end at this turn. Point? Yep, you end turn. Okay. And then that will probably... Oh, uh, I see. Right? There. Okay, so what happened now? 
Um, Ooh. Interestingly, so I didn't know this, I guess. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So what happened here is everywhere where there's a spark marker, we seeded those. The other cars, except for the car that was still there from last round, were seeded by another random draw. So there's a little bit of randomness here, mm -hmm. right? So okay. these three are the three neutral cards. Those are not spark markers, right? So those will, those are there now and they might, they won't come back next turn. The spark markers will just get on every turn, get a new car if the sale, if the sale happens or not, it doesn't matter, right? Um, so that's, so, that, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, sorry, please go on. I just, no, no, it's just like, so, and the last thing I'll say about it is because the second gradient here populated now, and it's the highest mm. populated gradient, that is now six dollars. The next one's four, the next one's three, and I think the one after that is two or one, I'm not sure. So if this up God. here, if there was a car up here in these one, two, three, four, in these six spots, if there was one in here, then that would be six. If there were none here, this would be four. So you always skip uh, gradients that are that have no cars in them for the sake of pricing, okay. right? Okay. So that's how the pricing happens, and now and that was a and that was a round of the game, right? right. So so demand is basically evolved now so that people want more uh, more features on i guess safety yeah. and reliability here well which right? we have which and, we had some influence on right which it's, we had some influence on right. but that got us into the second band um so and right. and that's mo almost more the standard right it was six dollars below because that's just what they had right now now the sort of standard expectation so you can still slum it in that lower band it's just yeah you're only going to get four dollars they're going to be like budget cards the other thing i have yeah. to remind you all of because i only mentioned it off like offhandedly this is zero one two three okay. thing. The only reason it's zero one two three right now is because both of the axes have zero minimum spec, right? right? If that minimum spec, so if we ever get design mm -hmm. back in, then wow. this will be one two three four, right? And if it has two on the minimum spec, it will be two three four five, right? Now, does anything ever supplant safety? Is that y-axis? Like we next round. Life. So see that. See this. Okay. Oh, the arrow. The, the arrow, arrow shows which axis will for sure go away, and it will be okay. replaced with whatever over here of the three has the highest innovation. Which right, right. now they're all at zero, because yeah. even though these three are at one, it always counts the distance from the minimum spec. Right. Yeah. right. So right now it would be. I think right now I just pick range. I think the tiebreaker is the order here because design. They are ordered. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's a, you yeah. know, for it's a, it's a last in, sorry, first, in, last in, first out. Sorry. What am I talking about? First in, first out. It's a five, four, two, in, right? Yeah. So this is a Q, but right now range would be picked because they're all tied. Right. Okay. And then the, the switching between axes, I guess is that's not a coin flip, right? It's just no, alternating. For it's each alternating. Turn. It's, I think it always okay. starts. So you seed them randomly, which I guess is another random element, but again, it's input, very input randomness E, right? Right. So you seed them randomly and then it always points to the X axis first. And now it's just going to flip back and forth every turn. Um, so yeah. So now we're in phase two research. Uh, all of us have one research point, right? As far as I can wait, no. We all, yeah, because we right now we don't get the so the only time you can add research or planning departments is during during construction. It's just that on the first turn we got to seed our factories with those things, right? So remind me that like what would if I wanted to be able to move my uh, two of my pieces in this phase, what would I need to build to be able to get more than one? You'd need to um, build you'd, in your factory. You'd need to build another another research department. Of which you only have one right now, right? So any any you, you get to move as many of anyone's tokens. With with the with the with the exception of the assembly capacity, you can't touch other people's assembly capacity. Um, mm -hmm. As many as you have research departments, um, but you can only ever move a token once. So if you have three research departments, you can't move the same token two or three times. Right, you can't speed run one particular category. Right. So another reason I might want to move someone's token again is just to cause that thing to Be become available. the dimension next round as you well. You could, yes, and it would also just straight up like again, you're number one on the engineering track right now, which means you have access to any tech. Right now, it doesn't matter, right? Because we're all tied on all tracks. 
but you would have access to any research technology by any person mm. during during the during the what the hell is that phase called building i don't know there's pro the phase probably has a name selling mm -hmm. build factory yeah during the build factory mm. phase you have access to any technology that's been researched by by one person right mm. because you're number one now this this order may still change during the focus phase right which happens before the the build factory phase does that make sense? It did up until the part where the order changes, which I, I get just sort of like, I'm just trying to understand the, the so right now impl the implica order. implications of that. Like if I were to move Ozzy up the design track in order for me to kind of snipe a door this round, that would I not be able to snipe so, that door if the order well, changed? Here's the thing. You have three Gantt charts and you go yeah. first in the focus phase. So let me go to the focus phase. Mm. We never even looked at that, right? So what happens here, turn order, straight up, right? On their turn, and I think the order play is the player with the most Gantt charts goes first, right? So that is you. You have two, you have three Gantt charts. Um, so that's not engineering or sales, it's Gantt charts. Yeah. You go first and you get to decide whether you want to spend all your Gantt charts to pick your position in turn order, which mm -hmm. then you could put in the first spot and then snipe whoever's marker you move up, right? But you would go yeah. last in sales, right? So, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, a beautiful a tension. Job. Beautiful tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in terms of building out the factory, like I, I guess, other than the space and the logistical concerns of you know, okay, maybe I want to be able to adapt to later turns. You know, like when you were doing your six like research department build out earlier, right? right. Was there any economic <laughs> factor of that, or was it totally logistical? I mean, that was me being, that was me showing you that you can do things that are really bad for you. Well, sure. Right. right. Yeah. I'm just curious, like the tension there. So is, I don't even I, have six. I mean, I could move six different markers up, but like, that sounds, that sounds wild. Right. <laughs> right. Mm. That's the other reason why greed, I think, I think, again, this is such a, there's such a weird hidden argument here that greed will always be the end of you. Right. Cause you can build all that <laughs> stuff. But then when you right. build it, suddenly the market board looks entirely different next turn. And you're like, well, I have these amazing cars, right. but no one gives a crap. <laughs> right. You want the ability to adapt. Right. Like that's the, you, you want, and that's the, so the logistical, and the logistical tension is enough, right? Even yeah. outside of. I mean, the, I think it is, right? <laughs> okay. I would agree. But it's also like, like discussing strategies in this game is, is to me right now, like we're like, first year math students <laughs> we're like is it is, is 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 this is this number system closed under addition i'm not sure like it's like we don't know what the hell we're talking about right um yeah there's a lot to look at now just kind of like reviewing the boards again reminding you know if i were to pick a feature that <laughs> y'all are closed off on on that letter you need to start a whole new mainline or something to well, right Satisfied. now, just... like right now, these two cars up here, like there's, not, there's a lot of cars going on, but also we have to be aware of the fact that you could just like bump up your assembly capacity. You already have a two by two marketing slot, right? Yeah. I mean, you bumping up assembly capacity is probably not a bad idea, right? Unless you want to yeah. go yeah. straight for the two right? sixes, right? For, if, well, two even then, right? Sixes. Like right? you could go oh, for the yeah. two sixes, yeah. but so could we. And you're not yeah. going to be first in sales. If you if you spend the Gantt charts now to be first in engineering to poach someone's tech, you're not going to be first in sales. But if it were the case that for some reason y'all didn't have the capacity to put a D right. on your main line, then you wouldn't be able to sell so what, either of those cards. So, in fact, I'm probably blocked on D. What I would do, yeah, you you might be, hmm, this is, a, so this is a point That's where ideal. you having two, so if you had, if you in the last turn had built another research department, which you could have, right, you could have put it anywhere. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you had done that, then now what you could do is bump yourself up on D and bump yourself up on assembly capacity. Right. Then you would have attached that to your car and now you're the only person who can even build here and you do not care anymore. Right now you could speculate that one of us is going to try to go up on D and since you're first in turn order, you would have access to that, but you're going to be last in sales. Oh, it's amazing, right? I mean, we all could bump up on D, right? We I mean, all could bump up on D. Be... 
yeah. theoretically right we could you but you don't know because you're going first <laughs> so you you're like are they gonna go yeah. up on d can i can i just stay here and hope that they do yeah. that and then i'm like oh god if i go up on d brian's gonna have access to that and he's but he is gonna be last in sales so i don't care right so mm. amazing I need, yeah i think i need to like really <laughs> meditate on this whole uh engineering leadership and with that i don't i've not internalized what that gets me i, I see that it's good but like i need to i think don't about think that it more. matters yet I don't think that it matters yet is my guess because another yeah. thing you can do is, you know, vie for getting all this stuff down here. Now the difference now, of course, being this is only four dollars, right? So you could yeah. get eight, you could get a guaranteed eight bucks if you spend your Gantt charts now and go to first in sales, guaranteed, right? Well, not oh, guaranteed. Cause... Not gar Sorry, not guaranteed because then then suddenly Ozzy and I will be like trying to like poach away two of the three cars right so that you don't get a second car in four maybe i i don't know <laughs> sorry when i because i want to put my marketing thing down i'm only going to sell one of those cars You're and only, then it will yeah, be and then it and then it will turn to yeah. my, my then, then i'll go next and then ozzy will yeah. go next right? yeah. and then you'll and then you'll go next as the fourth as yeah. the fourth turn of that and then you're hoping that there's still one more car left over in that in that uh in your in your marketing window Right. Right. Yeah. There's some game theory here in terms so of. So good. <laughs> the, it's like yeah. I I can't even. I mean, I when you just said the like this might be my favorite splatter. Like at first I was like, ah. and now I'm looking at this and I'm like, every single element of this looks dry on its own, in static rules. And then when you play it, you're like, oh my god. Right. Well, it's, I don't it's know if you've played. Really interesting web, right? Like the individual strands don't necessarily right. look like they have a lot, but together. Oh, Brian, like put... here's how you can guarantee two sales, which I don't think is worth it, but I'm just telling you there is a way. And the way is you build an. Mm, you, no, you can't. There's no way for you to put a second marketing. If this, if there was space here, you could put a second marketing department next to Sochol, your marketing here. And if you had that, you would get the three by three window. Then you could lay it down over all four mm, cars, yeah. and you would for sure get two. But you, yeah. but you, but you spatially can't do that. So you have to. Oh, the, so the marketing. I don't think I. The so, marketing. So this marketing department here on your board is what caused you to have a two by two marketing window, whereas Ozzy and I both had a one by two marketing window. If you ever yeah, have, no, that yeah. If you attach, I was kind of wondering though about. Go ahead. Sorry, the relationship between the marketing department and the dealership slash mainline. So it's only between the dealership. So that, so the marketing okay. department has to be attached to the dealership. You don't have to have one, right? Neither Ozzy nor I have one, but because of yeah. that, we only have a one by two marketing window. You had a two by two, and that's because you had the marketing department here. If you had another marketing department attached, and I, here's the thing I'm not clear on. I don't know if it has to be attached through another marketing department or if they both have to be connected to the to the dealership. But they have nothing mm -hmm. to do with the main line. So they're they're related to the dealership, right? And yeah. that's how you increase your marketing range from two by mm -hmm. one to two by two to three by three. And the only thing yeah. I'm going to look up now right now is move focus marker. Boop -a -doo, print so, if I had, so if I had two dealerships, do I get two rectangles during that no, phase? You get, or? One, you get a three by three rectangle. You always get one rectangle per dealership. You could have, you could, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Sorry, yeah, yeah. You could have two dealerships, but be careful about this. As I said earlier, mm. if they are connected to the same main line. Mm, sorry, mm. that's not, that's also not true. Oh. That's also not true. If, because it's different. If you have two main lines connected to the same dealership, there's a different rule about, I think, two dealerships connected to a main line. I see. I'm not sure about that. Let me, okay. must be. I'll read through the rules this yeah, weekend. Cause that's yeah. the only thing where I'm just like, must in factory player must have technology, um, access to and research. And access Andy, just as a quick yeah. time check, we're under five minutes yeah. for your hard stuff. Oh, did I say oh, 11? Nice. I did say 1130, right? Yeah, I did say 1130. Yeah. And have you played food chain magnet in person? Uh, once, yes. Okay, because yeah, the the thing that I, my one gripe with it is that you know when the board's complicated and you have to do that math for distance and marketing and da 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 like every yeah. single round, I did, 
it's really kind of unfun, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I think this game seems to uh, make all of that, you know, it's pre-computed and baked into the board stage is much more readable right. than yeah. food chain magnet is. And so uh, the kind of the logistics or the, the um, eating phase of food chain magnet kind of drives me crazy to administer in, in real life. It, it's painful. So I think, <laughs> yeah. So I think this game kind of compresses that away, which I really appreciate. So, you know, so far. Right. I'm trying to, so I'm pretty sure that somewhere here in, Placing, placing, place a market window somewhere here in the, either on the page of print sales brochures or building. There's something about technology stations. Yeah, there's probably something about existing stations, upgrading stations, and then break technology, uh, factory full expansion. Because in here, in the building factory, it doesn't even say anything about. It says placing stations. It says general requirements, technology stations must connect to mainline, must be locally unique, must have attached spec indicator, existing stations in later years, uh, blah, blah, however, with the, uh, build upgrading stations. I mean, I, I can rationalize it as if a, if a dealership is attached to two specs, it wants to pick which one to feature. Whereas two dealerships going to one spec, it's like, well, they're just picking the same one. Like, I, I, I can sort of rationalize it as that. I mean, I know we haven't found the rule yet, but... Here's my guess, though, without even finding this right now. My guess is that if you had a second dealership attached to the same main line, you could use that dealership as well, right? Yeah. I bet you, that's what I, I guess you just get to pick the dealership and then you'd have two frames. Yeah. So then in that case, you would have two frames. But the problem, the only problem with that is, well, problem, it's not really that big of a problem. You only have three dealerships total, right? Uh, so if you ever want to make a second main line, which you could, right? Because again, the, those main lines are small for a reason. <laughs> they run out of space pretty fast. Um, I think you could, and in that case, you would have run out of dealerships. And the, and the other dealerships aren't better. They're just larger, which makes them a bigger pain to place. Yeah. That's my guess. But yeah, it's 11. Wow, it's 11. The time really ran through. It ran, ran away fast. But yeah, we went through a full round. I feel like that, you know, we don't have strategy yet, but I feel like that's as good a teach as I'm going to get to. And I think that was, I feel confident enough to put that up on YouTube. I think this is a fine enough teach. Um, yeah, it was yeah, great. Thanks, it thanks for the walkthrough. Yeah. And we yeah, can, should, well, and, you know, as per usual, I think we just keep this game going and fumble our way through it yeah. um, because yeah. this, this works pretty well. Okay, cool. I'm going to hang up so I can like sign off on the other end. Thanks guys. Yep. Sounds good. Talk to you See soon. Sounds good. Bye. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. Well, that was fun. Um, that was this is the benefit of working with something like uh, like uh, online board gamers, right? They did it. They did. It. There's there's UI issues, right? You can always find UI issues in almost any UI, especially ones that are like web based. But this works pretty solid, right? Um, yeah, there's one or two rules that we haven't quite figured out yet, especially with respect to marketing departments. But again, they're probably in here, and I just. Yeah, because the rules, again, they're not that long. And they're actually really well illustrated. So I'm pretty sure that just going through this, because I, I haven't read these. I'll be honest. I have not read the rules. What I did is I watched two rules explainers. And the best one is the one by uh, uh, Branislav Berenc, Berenc, um Mithrania, I think is the website. Um, and uh, Brian pointed me to that one, right? And it's a really really solid rules explanation and it's only like 25 minutes long um, which of course these rules explanations don't cover strategy because you can't and also i think most people don't know how to play this game well yet um so with that i'll say it's 11 30 i have to go make a call before i have a meeting at noon uh, which is of course going to be super interesting for everyone watching this later on youtube um but yeah so if you're interested in this this is a uh, horseless carriage by splatterstone uh the dutch the dutch company and now i'm getting a calls coming in right now so i have to get off this uh, off this call um but with all that said uh i would say uh check out our podcast feed at eggplant.show i don't know when the next one's going up we just recorded hi-fi rush on wednesday i could unfortunately not be part of that because i have a lot of a lot of other stuff on my plate right now and i'm actually taking care of this channel like this is a this whole like board games explainer startup board games play with people who want to watch this has become slightly more valuable to me in terms of building the community out in that direction. So maybe I'll do more of that in the future because some of our videos are getting like a hundred plus views, which not a lot, but you know, you gotta start somewhere. 
So with all that said, I'll say uh, thanks a lot for watching. That was super fun. Um, Spelunky didn't go as well, but again, that won't matter for the YouTube video because we'll cut that out from the beginning. Um, and I'll be back with more uh, board games and video games and runs and all that good stuff next Friday at the very latest. And until then, I hope you all stay safe, happy, healthy, and sane. Cheers.